right, good evening, everyone. Good to see you here. You got this one on, Dave? Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Good to see you in church tonight. Take a songbook. Let's start by singing together, shall we? Turn over to number 195, Down at the Cross, Where My Savior Died. Let's stand together to sing it. Brother Bob will lead us. On that first together, Down at the Cross, Where My Savior Died. Down where, for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. On that last together, come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy for soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. All right, good singing. And uh, you know, when you're saved by what Christ has done, then it's glory to his name. Amen. Uh, if you didn't say anything you do, it couldn't be glory to his name then. It'd be glory to your name. And uh, that's why salvation's by grace through faith. Amen? Amen? And I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Hope you're glad you're saved. And, uh, and I'm glad I'm in church as well. And uh, it's good to see everybody here tonight. Appreciate you being in your place on Wednesday evening. Let's open with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you so much for another opportunity we have to gather together here in this place in the middle of the week. Thank you, Lord, for each one who's made their way here tonight. Lord, we're bowing before you here at the beginning of the service, and we ask you to meet with us this evening as well. Lord, you promised whenever we gather together that here you'll be in the midst. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll be honored tonight, that truly, not just a song we sing, but that it will be glory to your name this evening, that Christ will be lifted up and we'll be drawn closer to him because we were in church this evening. So have your way in this service. May your will be done in each one of our hearts and lives. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Would you turn with me to number 538 in your hymnal? 538, all praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 538 on that first together. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme. Who gave his son for man to die, that he might man redeem? Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. On that third, Redeemer, Savior, friend of men, once ruined by the fall, thou hast devised salvation plan, for thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace, of all earth's kingdoms conqueror, whose reign shall never 
ever sees. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. This evening's missionary message is from Ted and Lynn Mullins, veteran missionaries with 28 and a half years in Papua New Guinea. Psalm 1846, the Lord liveth and bless me, be my rock, let the God my salvation be exalted. June 2015, dear friends, thank you for your continued prayers and support of our ministry. Fundament Baptist Seminary is on summer break, so I have some time from the missions classes there. The classes will be available on MP3 format after they are completed. I will give you more information about that at a later date. Fundamental Baptist Church in Ventura, California held a recent missions conference and part of the program was to honor missionaries Dennis and Dee Wells, Lynn and me for long service in Papua New Guinea. However, due to an emergency illness of Lynn's mother, we were not present for the meeting. Pastor Lance Shapiro pr presented us with a beautiful crystal trophy, a new Bible, an engraved leather case, a huge stand-up banner, and a ladies' carry-all bag. We appreciate so much his thoughtful and generous gesture. At this time, Australian Pastor Simon and Jan Moore are visiting with us for a few days. We are certainly enjoying the fellowship of these longtime friends. Brother Simon visited us five times in Papua New Guinea to help with various projects. My health is stable with mostly good days if I don't overdo working and traveling. I still have occasional dizzy spells, which is a souvenir from a virus contacted in Papua New Guinea. But really nothing to complain about, and God is supplying all our needs. Lynn's mom was in the hospital five days and is currently in rehab for 20 to 30 days. Please, please pray for her, continued mobility improvement. May God continue to bless you. Your labor is for him, Ted and Lynn. Blessing to see somebody on the field for nearly 30 years. Isn't that something? And uh, some of you remember them. I, I think the church here probably has supported them since they went to the field. Uh, the entire time so uh, that's a blessing to hear from them all right get your prayer guide out if you would anybody need one tonight uh, slip your hand up in the air the usher will get you one everybody get one all right good job fellas uh, start on the back with the coming events of course tomorrow night will be the RU inside down at the prison at CRC and uh, appreciate you praying for that on Thursday evenings Friday night for the former unanimous here at church from 7 to 9 p.m. Saturday morning for our soul winning and bus visitation at 10 a.m. Uh, here at the church. And there is a, that is a mistake, by the way, here it's, it, for the BPS trip. That's not July 30th. That's June 30th. Okay, make sure you see that. That's June 30 for the trip to BPS. All right, and there's a sign-up sheet for that downstairs uh, in the lobby. And uh, sign up to go with us down there to put together some Bibles. And then if you want to add on there, uh, July 6 through 9 is our vacation Bible school this year. July 6 through nine all right monday through thursday brother hanby will be coming uh, to help conduct that uh there is a sign up sheet yes, sir. down there and uh, you can sign up uh to help out during vbs and then uh, we'll have a meeting sunday evening uh, after the service and kind of make sure everything's organized for that and you're prepared uh, for vbs that'll be here before we know it all right, so uh, we appreciate you taking a note of that. On the inside, uh, we praise the Lord for the good night at CRC last week with 40 inmates there and seven saved, and we had one graduate the course, uh, Performers Unanimous, and uh, did a great job with that. And then uh, we welcomed the new members from the last week, Thelma Blystone and Terry Wells, and uh, glad to have them part of our church. And then uh, continue to pray for the requests and the, the different church ministries that we have and the ministries the Lord has given to us here on the health issues. Uh, you can add a name on there. Uh, this was from Thelma Blystone. John Alexander. John Alexander. He's having heart surgery in the morning. And uh, so please put him on your list and pray for him tomorrow. And let's see. I'm looking to see if Sandy 
is this the yeah sandy how do you say that last name glitch glitch what glitch okay that's what i said glitch right and uh all right uh sandy glitch it's a friend of hers recovering from thyroid surgery and also they did the biopsy on that and praise the lord no cancer no cancer there so we praise the lord and rejoice with that uh that's good all right and one other request was handed to me on a card tonight if you just put as another request is uh krista barrage that's of course uh jack and sherry's daughter uh she's the nurse been uh, having difficulties with the pregnancy and such and uh, they're going to transition her to another area in her job I guess is what it sounds like so just pray for wisdom they'll know the right move to make with that all right and I know they appreciate you praying for her and uh, just just put her on there not only for the job but probably for the pregnancy as well that all will go well with that all right and then of course we're praying for those in authority uh, those in our military defending our country these who are battling cancer the salvation list uh, pray for God to send soul winners across their path and witness to them. We pray for the unreached people groups of the world. And then we're praying for our missionaries and highlighted by the Mullins this evening uh, in Papua New Guinea. Okay? And uh, we want to go to prayer this evening. And uh, Brother Paul Abel, I'd like you to come, if you would, sir, and lead us in our prayer this evening. And uh, Brother John will lead us audibly. And I want you to pray along silently with him as uh, he leads us audibly. So that's how you unite, unite our hearts together in prayer for these requests, all right? Brother John? Let's pray. All right, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for the health that you've given us. We pray that you'd give us a good health throughout this service and throughout the week and the days to come. And we just pray that... Uh, for those that uh, could not be here tonight with us, and we pray that you would uh, uh, help them to get better and continue to watch over them, and we pray for John Alexander to the surgery tomorrow. We pray that you'd give the doctors the wisdom and the knowledge and that that they need to be able to do the surgery and have it completed and that he'd be good and get back on his feet quickly. And then we pray for Jack's daughter, that you'd help her with the pregnancy and also with the job that she has uh, at the, being a nurse and we pray she'd intervene in this situation and everything would turn out to be for that that you want it to be and we pray for those that uh, have here at the church the ministries we have we pray that each person would check the list and be praying for these ministries and then also uh, say uh, dear lord where do you want to put me in am I? and we pray she'd help us now and we thank you for this and we thank you for the way we are, have here to be able to serve you and we pray that you continue to watch over the ministries and here at the church and we do pray for those that are our, our you group and we thank you for those that have made professions of faith and we thank you for this one that graduated and we pray that you continue to help him as he goes through this uh, new life that he has in Jesus Christ and we just pray that you'd uh, build a hedge about him and keep him safe and uh, till he gets to be able to get uh, back with other people that are with, that he loves and, and trusts us throughout the week, the weeks to come and are you. And then we do pray for a vacation Bible school that you'd, each of us would check the list and uh, fill in the blanks that, uh, where you want us at. And then we pray for the visitations that we have here that uh, each person would be going out and doing that that you'd want us to do. And we pray for the upcoming events that will be in our places doing that that you want us to do. We also pray for our authority, the people that are in authority over us. We just pray that they would be doing the right thing and uh, uh, voting on things that would make the country strong and the churches be strong, strong because without the churches and the people in the churches, that's not much hope for uh, the country. And we just pray that you'd be with our military that's out there watching over us, protecting us, and keeping the things uh, on us a key no more normal keel we ask that you'd help us uh, pray for them in different countries and uh, that God would uh, be with them throughout their time and service and we pray for those that have cancer and those that are not on the list we pray that you just bless those that are in cancer and as they go through this time of trial and tribulation that you would uh, help them and help the families that uh their relatives of or friends and we have ask that you'd help them there and we pray for the salvation list we have and we pray that you'd uh, help us to be uh, pray for this daily and help us to know that 
that uh, someone is going. Someone would go to the door if we continue to uh, pray for them and pray that you'd help them see that they need the Savior. And when we go to the door and things like that, we ask that you'd help us now throughout the day, throughout the week, and we pray that you'd be with the pastor tonight as he brings the message that we'd listen to the message and be able to be hearers of the word, but we also want to be doers of the word. And we pray that you'd help us throughout this uh, meeting, and we pray that you'd bless this service tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 209, if you would turn with me to, to, in your hymnal to 209, like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. Let's all stand together, if you would. 209, on that first together. Like a river glorious is God's perfect peace over all victorious in his bright and Perfect yet it floweth fuller every day. Perfect yet it groweth deeper all the way. Stayed upon Jehovah, hearts are fully blessed, finding as he promised. Perfect peace and rest Hidden in the hollow Of his blessed hand Never foe can follow Never traitor stand Not a surge of worry Not a shade of care not a blast of hurry touch the spirit there stayed upon Jehovah hearts are fully blessed finding as he promised perfect peace and rest amen greet one another make somebody feel welcome especially our guest We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. above let's sing that last together when we get to the chorus we'll have the instruments drop out we'll sing that a cappella on that last together every joy or trial falleth from above traced upon our dial by the son of love we may trust him fully all for us to do they who trust him holy find him holy true stayed upon 
peace and rest. Amen. That's good singing. You can be seated. Ushers will come and we'll get our offering for the midweek and uh, give as God has blessed and prospered you. And uh, appreciate your faithfulness and giving through these summer months. And uh, let's pray and we'll ask God's blessing on the offering tonight. Brother Taylor, lead us in our prayer, please. Okay, let us pray. Dear Father, as we come before you now, Lord, we uh, come to midweek service, and it's uh, truly good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for being here with us. And Lord, as uh, we take up this offering again, help us to be faithful stewards of the finances that you've given us. Give of the increase. And both tithes and offerings, Lord. May it be pleasing in thy sight, a sweet savor to you. Let us all be remembering to give that you love the cheerful giver. And Lord, bless it. Multiply it as only you can. Be with the pastor as he opens up this lesson tonight, your word. Let us all be attentive, Lord, to what you have us to learn. Let us to be the doers of the word. And we thank you, Father, for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. if you would Habakkuk chapter 2 please as the or the old but I learned it growing up Habakkuk but uh it's Habakkuk I guess but uh have you ever anybody ever heard of uh, Habakkuk before and uh some of the folks across the the, the pond call it that I think uh I want to think uh have you ever heard Ian Paisley preach yeah, does that name sound familiar to anybody Ian Paisley from, was from Northern Ireland so Ann's heard him I think he pronounced it Habakkuk, but uh, well, I guess we'll go with Habakkuk, all right? That sounds a little easier, I guess. Habakkuk chapter 2, Habakkuk chapter 2. Maybe I should have told you earlier where it was. You could have been looking for it. Uh, the preacher always likes to hear the pages of the Bible rustle, but just not rustle too long, And uh, but I hope you get there. Habakkuk chapter 2. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we ask your blessing now upon the reading of your word tonight. And Lord, as we look into this last in this series of lessons on you providing your word to every generation. And I pray, Lord, once again, you would open our understanding as we look into your word. And that has already been asked tonight, Lord, that we would not just be hearers of the word, but we would desire to be doers of the word. 
We realize our responsibility in uh, taking care of and publishing the Word of God. And I pray, Lord, again tonight, you would minister to each of us, and Holy Spirit of God, speak to every heart this evening. Lord, I pray that each of us would be open to what you would want to say to us this evening. So, Lord, help us, and help me as I bring this study, and help the people as they listen. And I'll thank you for what you'll accomplish, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God's purpose. Now, tonight we'll talk about God's purpose for providing His Word to every generation. If you remember, we, we understand that God wanted to reveal Himself to mankind and wanted it to be known to Him. And ultimately, He did that through the written Word of God. Uh, that was uh, going to be much more specific, much more accurate. Uh, let's, uh, not so easily misunderstood. Remember, we talked about how just the instruction that God gave to Adam and Adam gave to Eve, by the time Eve repeated to Satan, she'd messed it up already uh, and already uh, added some things that God didn't have involved with it. So God said, I think we better write this down. And uh, he's going to give it the written word. Then we saw that something that valuable as the written word of God is going to have to be handled by specific people and with specific, in a specific way, in a very uh, important way. There's a certain way that God wanted His Word to be handled. And so we, we found out, remember, the Old Testament priests, uh, particularly the Levites, and particularly uh, who handled the holy things of the temple, the Kohathites. And then you find out that the, even the kings had to write down the Word of God and to read it daily. That was their responsibility. But when you come to the New Testament, who are the kings and the priests in the New Testament? That's us. Uh, he's called us kings and priests. And so now we've been entrusted with the Word of God. And it's our responsibility to take care of it and to publish His Word. The, the tragedy is the part of publishing His Word in our day, we have passed that off to other people. Uh, we have not... And listen, we've left the care and the sanctity and, and the publishing of the Scriptures to unbelievers. To, as Ezekiel 44, we looked at last week, we've left that to strangers. All right? This isn't in your notes, so don't look down there. Um, you have to look and see, where is he? It's not in there yet. Uh, uh, we'll get to your notes here in a sec. But the, um, we, we, we've, we've pushed that off to, to the unsaved. And we've let them, we've let publishing companies publish God's Word. We've let unsafe people take the most precious possession that you and I have, and that's the Word of God. And we've said, you print it for us. And you publish it for us. And we wonder why it got messed up. We wonder why there's so many different versions of the Bible. We wonder why there's so many changes and why uh, some of them have verses out and some of them add verses in and add words in and change words. Because, listen, an unsafe person isn't going to have the, 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 the word of God. doesn't mean anything to them. You know what it means to them? Money. Money. That's what it means to them. That's what they're living for. Listen, think about this. Would we consider, what would you think? If, would, would we put an ad in the paper and say, hey, uh, Bio Baptist Church is looking for Sunday school teachers. Apply here. And, and, and anybody walk in? We just take them to teach Sunday school? No, we have requirements if you're going to teach Sunday school. And if you have children in this church, you would want us to have requirements for who's going to stand up and teach your child in Sunday school. Uh, what about a nursery worker? Would you allow the most precious possession you have are your children? Uh, would, you just, would you like it if we just hired in people from off the street to watch your kids in the nursery? You wouldn't want that. You would say, no, these, are, these children are precious. We don't know who that person is. We don't know who these people are. We wouldn't do that. You wouldn't say, hey, I found this guy. I met this guy this week down at uh, you know, the restaurant. He seemed like a nice guy. I think he ought to be a deacon in our church. You would say, no, wait a minute, Pastor. There's qualifications for deacons. That's an important position in the church. But listen, we, we don't accept that in any other area. But when it comes to the Bible, we've said, sure, let the, let the unsaved publish the Bible. Let the unsaved print the Bible. And at any time, those unsaved publishing companies... If at any time they decide we're not printing the Bible anymore. After all, it always goes to those haters. Those Christians who won't get along with anybody. Those Christians who won't go along with the program. 
So we're not going to print any more Bibles. Then where are we going to get our Bibles? See, we're, we're being a world of hurt because we've, we've given away our responsibility. It's not the responsibility of the lost to publish God's word. It's our responsibility. That's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And so we, we see that we're going to do, we're the people that God has called to protect, preserve, and publish the word of God. Now, tonight we're going to look at the purpose of God providing his word to every generation. What's the purpose? What, what, what is the reason behind that God wants his word to every generation. Number one, so others may read it for themselves. Why would God publish His Word to every generation? Because He wants other people to read it for themselves. Habakkuk 2.2. Now I started to say it the other way. Now I can't say it either way. Uh, and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth. He says, I want you to write it down. He says, Habakkuk, I don't just want you to tell them what I'm telling you. I want you to write down what I'm telling you. And I want them to be able to read it for themselves. Did you notice that? Why, why write it down? Well, number one, you write it down for credibility. Credibility. The vision or the word of God that was given there to Habakkuk was, that, was of such importance that God said, I want you to write it down. Writing is more permanent. Writing is more accurate. Writing is safer. And, and, it, and, and that's why God chose it to be able to pass His Word on to the next generation. Credibility. Secondly, the reason was for clarity. For clarity. The vision, it says here, was to written, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables. Make it plain simply means He wanted to reveal it. He wanted to make it understood. He wanted to be able to understand what they're reading. God says, I don't just want to communicate with you. I want you to understand what I'm communicating to you. That's why I always pray, and you ought to pray before you read your Bible, Lord, open my understanding of your word. How many times some of you are in this room, or in the RU program, and you try to memorize verses, and any time I try to help you memorize verses, uh, you, you've heard me say, what is the verse saying? Understand what it's saying to you. Once you have the understanding of what it's saying, don't just memorize words on a page that don't mean anything. You have to understand what it's meaning. What under have understanding? God says, "I'm going to write it down for clarity, so you'll know exactly what I'm saying." See, without listen, without a clear understanding, without a a, a clear understanding, there's no application to your life because you don't know what it's talking about. So I'm going to make it plain, and God's word is plain. Okay, no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. So it's it's written for, uh, for credibility and for clarity. And then the third reason it's written down is for conviction. The vision of of the Word of God here that He gave to Habakkuk to give to them was of such importance. Notice what were they supposed to do once they read it that He may run that readeth it. In other words, it, it, it's so written and it's made plain so that you could respond immediately to it and, and, and you could respond in such a way that you're going you're gonna to be quick to obey it, eager to obey it. When someone's running, you figure they're in a hurry, okay? that they're in a rush to get somewhere. And when you're running uh, to do the Word of God, you're in a hurry to fulfill God's Word. You're in a hurry to obey what God wants you to do. Don't wait. So we understand that it was written, all right? So we see the importance of publishing, the purpose of publishing was that others could read it for themselves, number two, so that they all can obey it. So that they all can obey it. Not only can they read it for themselves, but they can all obey it for themselves. Now, I want you to turn to the New Testament and look to the book of Romans, would you please? Romans 16. Romans 16. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then Romans. Romans 16, the last chapter of Romans. And this is kind of the doxology of Romans. And, and if you're not careful, you can kind of see, well, I'm in the last few verses of Romans, and I'm looking forward to getting into Corinthians. And you can kind of just read right through this. 
But there's some great verses here. Two verses will particularly concentrate on verse 25 and 26. Notice what it says. Now, to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Great verses. Now, let's see. There, there's, by the way, is there value in every word of God? Yeah, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Okay, so all scripture, every word, do we believe every word has been inspired by God? Yes, we do. Every word, God breathed, God gave us the words. And so every word is profitable. And so we, we know there's value here in the scripture. So we find out, I think it's A on your paper there, is grounding in the word of God comes through receiving the scriptures. How do you get grounded? How do you become mature in your Christian faith? How do you do that? You do that with the Bible. You're never going to get grounded. You're never going to get established or established as the word is here without the word of God. Okay? It, it'll never happen. Uh, Christians who are not sure of their salvation, Christians who are not sure of what they believe, who get blown about with different doctrines that come around or can't tell false teachers, are by and large Christians who are not in their Bible. They don't read the Bible. They're not studying the Bible. They're not memorizing the Bible. They're not meditating in the Bible. They're not growing. And they're not getting grounded in the Word of God. All right? So now notice what he says. Here's how you get grounded. Notice what he said. You're, according, you're established according to, first of all, my gospel. That would be the Pauline epistles. This is Paul writing Romans. So my gospel, the Pauline epistles. Then he says the preaching of Jesus Christ. Where would you read about the preaching of Jesus Christ? That's in the gospels. That's in the gospels. Then he says according to the revelation of the mystery. Well, the revelation of the mystery is the book of Revelation. It's the unveiling of Jesus Christ. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Then, now it's made manifest, he talks about, it's made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets. That's the prophetical books of the Bible. The commandment of the everlasting God. That's the Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Bible. And then notice that God says, I've made known to all nations... That's supposed to be the Great Commission. Go ye therefore into, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we're supposed to carry the Great Commission to all the world for the obedience of the faith. And so uh, the grounded in the Word of God. And all the Word of God. Don't, don't just get... Listen, uh, you may read a proverb a day, but don't just read a proverb a day and think you're good. Okay? Read, read Proverbs and... And, and listen, I think every Christian ought to have some kind of a system where you're getting through your Bible every year. We have some Old Testament, some New Testament. Uh, take, the, take the number of pages in your Bible and, and, and find out how many there are. I think there's 1,500 some in my Bible. And so if there's 365 days in a year, I divide 365 to 1,500. And, and in just a little over five pages a day, I can read my Bible through in one year. And if I read 10 pages a day, I'd finish it two times in a year. Now, now, I don't know about you, but when I get a book that I really like and you really read, is it really difficult to read five pages? Or is it difficult to read ten pages? No. Some of you have sat there and you've turned pages of some good book you're into and you, 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 you weren't going to sleep until you finished it. You stayed up all night flipping pages or till two or three in the morning turning pages. And so it shouldn't be that difficult to do five or ten pages of the Bible. But have different places you can read. It's all right to, to get the variety of what's there. It's tough if those 20 pages you're going to read that day are all in Second Chronicles or First Chronicles something. Now, that might be a little tough. But you can read a, little, a few pages of that, and then you can read somewhere else and, and, and be able to get your Bible read, okay? So uh, it is grounding you in the Word of God. The second thing is be there going with the Word of God, going with the Word of God as a twofold plan. Notice the first one here, 
It, it, this, this goes under, they're getting the Word of God. We're making it known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Now that's going to require Scripture translation for all nations. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it's going to require Scripture translation translating into their language so they can read it for themselves. And it'll require Scripture publishing to all nations. Scripture publishing to all nations. Just Once you get the Bible translated their language, you've got to be able to get it into the hands of people. And it has to be published. And so we need to publish it to all nations. That's our responsibility. It's given to us so they can get it and they can obey the Scriptures. As we said earlier, the Great Commission is, is not just to see them saved and see them baptized. The Great Commission is also to teach them whatsoever things I have commanded you. How are you going to do that without a Bible? How are you going to do that? And, and, and you can say, well, let's just tell them about Jesus. You understand? They have no idea who Jesus is. We, 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 we have a framework and we have a background because we've been exposed to the Word of God. They don't have any exposure to that. And so they, you have to have the Word of God. It has to be published and has to be given in their language. So we understand God's purpose is that others can read it for themselves. His purpose is so that all can obey it. And then number three, His purpose is so the church can send it. So the church can send it. All right, who's the church? Thank you. All right, not the building, it's us. So we can send it. Look at Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4, please. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Colossians 4. Paul is closing out the epistle here, giving salutation to different people. And in verse 15, he says, Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphus, and the house which is in his house, and the church, rather, which is in his house. And when this epistle, verse 16, when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. So the, the church, listen, the church's job, as we said Sunday evening, is to send out messengers. The church's job is to be a sending station. We've, we've, we've lost sight of that somewhat in America. And we've, we, we've gotten into the idea that we just want to gather us a big crowd. We don't care who goes to the mission field. We don't care who goes into the ministry. We don't care. We want to keep everybody here. That's not the biblical model. The biblical model is let's bring them in that we might send them out and send them out to ministry in the, in the, in the church. Jesus said we're supposed to pray for something. He said you're to pray that the Lord would send forth laborers into his harvest and so we're to be praying for that to happen and we're supposed to be part of the answer to that prayer and so to be effective messengers the messengers we have to equip the messengers with the message and the language of the people they're going to reach it won't do any good to go over to India and try to talk to them in English just like if they came here and talked to you in Indian. You have no clue what they're trying to say. And you think how frustrating that is. They, they, they have to be able to have it in their language and, and you to be able to understand their language. So now notice, notice a couple things here. The written word, A, the written word was to be a part of the believer's lives. Did you catch that? When this epistle is read... And that's interesting. It was read in church. And, and, I've, and I've had the occasion to be in some churches like that where uh, every Sunday evening they had somebody get up and they just read the Bible together. Some of you have been in places like that. They just, that scripture reading was part of their service. But you know what? That's, that's a scriptural thing. You ought to read the Bible when you come to church. And uh, that's, that's one thing. By the way, that's one reason why we have scripture reading uh, Sunday morning and Sunday night. You say, why do you have Scripture reading? Two things. We, we ought to read the Scripture. Number two, when we publicly read the Scripture, we read from the King James Bible. 
And there's many times people come and they'll visit and they don't have the King James Bible. You know what they do? They come up and say, what, what verse are you using? Because you know what? They can't read along. And, so I, and if they want to read along, they get a King James Bible and read along. We do the same thing at the prison with the Psalm 1. How many times these guys come up and ask, we use some other version? We say, no, you've memorized out the King James Version. And then I try to tell them, you know, it's a fourth grade reading level. 75% of the words in the King James Bible are one-syllable words. Don't buy into the media and don't buy into the unsaved publishing companies telling you that you can't understand it, that it's too hard. Oh, the, the these and the thous. You know, there's not that many these and thous. There's, there's even some U's and I's in there. Okay? God knows what he's doing, and so you can, you can get it. So we want to read when the epistle is read, and then the written word they received was the result of someone being obedient to God's command to provide it for them. Remember, they were to read it, they were to copy it, and then they were to pass it on. And that's why he said, you're going to read this, but he said, make sure that you pass it on to the church of Laodicea, and they read it, and likewise, you're going to take the epistle I wrote them, and you're going to read it in your church. And if it gets, starts to get worn out, you copy it. And those rules that we read a few weeks ago uh, were in effect for being able to copy it accurately and without error and to continue to have the very words of God. And so uh, the, 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 the word was a part of the believer's life and it was a result of someone else being obedient to what God told them to do. The reason there are nearly 3 billion people in the world that don't have a Bible in their language is because we have been disobedient to what God has called us to do. Now, that's the facts. And, and now you say, well, what are you going to do about it? It's, it's, the, it's the question, when's the best time to plant a tree? Hmm? Okay. Really, 30 years ago would have been the best time to plant a tree because you'd be enjoying it now. But if you didn't get it done 30 years ago, when's the next best time to plant one? Right now. So that 30 years from now, if the Lord tarries, there'll be a bunch of folks that'll have the Bible that don't, that, that don't have anything now because we've neglected our responsibility. We've passed it off on people who don't have any commission from God to get it to anybody. Their, their, only, their only desire, when you give it to the unsaved, the only desire is to make money off it. And that is why they publish Bibles, because it is a money maker. Okay? And so we have to understand what our responsibility is. Now, what are the results? There are results for being obedient to publishing the Scriptures by printing. All right? There are results. Several results. First of all, it unlocks the door of understanding. It unlocks the door of understanding. Can you imagine? Now, there might be a few people in here, but most of us, listen, if I handed you the New Testament, or if I handed you the, uh, the New Testament tonight, and it was a Greek New Testament, is there anybody in here that would just say, oh, thank you so much, this will be a great blessing to me? Is there anybody? fluent in Greek that you could sit down and read it and say boy this is wonderful no it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a blessing to you because it's a, it's a different language than your heart language and you couldn't understand any of it what would you do if that's all that was available to you you'd, you'd, you'd be in a, a difficult position you have no understanding if you don't have any understanding you can't learn it it doesn't help you at all and you can never apply anything that you're, you're looking at. You see, understanding will, will come from doing. That's why oftentimes in the Bible you'll hear the psalmist pray, give me understanding according to your word. I want to understand what I'm reading. And, and you, you, doing is putting into practice what you believe. You don't read the Bible to know the Bible. You read the Bible to do the Bible. You read the Bible to obey the Bible. He told Joshua, you're going to meditate in the Bible. Why? That you may observe to do according to what's written therein. Okay? God's not, God never blesses us for the Bible we know. He blesses us for the Bible we live. So live the Bible you learn. And so it, 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 it 
it, it gives us the, it unlocks the door of understanding because we have it printed in our language. Number, the, the second thing underneath results is it makes Christ known to the world. It makes Christ known to the world. In John chapter 16, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. This Holy, by the way, men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit revealed these things, and He did it in writing. That's how we know what God wants, because He gave it to us in writing. And we have been entrusted with something in our language that we can read and understand it. See? We're without excuse. We've been greatly blessed. And anything, listen, anything spoken and written down by God is still alive today. The Word of God is quick. What's that word quick mean? It's alive. You have the quickened who were dead in trespass and sin. Quicken is an old word that, that, that simply means made alive. So the Word of God is alive. There's no other book you have anywhere in your house that is like this book. This one is alive. It'll change your life. It'll transform your life. And so, it, 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 you understand, anything spoken and written down by God is alive today. Look at Matthew 21. Would you look there, please? Matthew 21. Jesus is speaking. Matthew 21. And verse number 31, 31. Matthew 21, 31. Whither of them twain did the will of his father? And they am I in the right place? Yeah. Matthew 21, 21, 31. Whither of them, they said the first. No, uh, that's not what I'm looking for. I don't have the right one. Is it 22? Yes, it is. No, no, it isn't. Hold on, I'll tell you in a minute. Let's see here. Yeah, that's it. I think I am looking for 22, 31, and 32. At least that's what I have underlined in my Bible, so I think that might be it. Here we go. Jesus said, As touching of the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, verse 32, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now, that's a quotation from Exodus 3 and verse 6. Moreover, he said, this he's talking to Moses now, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So Jesus here is quoting something that was written 1,500 years earlier, and yet he's quoting it to these people at that time, 1,500 years later and saying, this is for you. This is for you. It's still relevant now. Well, if it was relevant then, 1,500 years after it was written, think it would still be relevant now, 3,000 or 5,000 years after it was written? Absolutely. Because God doesn't change. And God's Word never changes. And God's Word is alive, and it's still alive today. We have the words of God. Listen, if the Word of God is inspired, it's breathed out by God, and then God has taken that Word, and it has been preserved, kept for us, then is it still inspired? It still is inspired. It hasn't changed. Is it still alive? It's still alive. It hasn't changed. See? God, God keeps His Word. He preserves His Word. And it, what was alive then is still alive now. All right? Putting the Scriptures into practice is the key to realizing God's power in your life, or the power of God in your life. Notice what Jesus said in Matthew 22 and verse 29. 
Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor what? The power of God. The power of God. You, you are never going to be filled with the power of God if you neglect the Bible. You must know the Scriptures to have God's power. You say, I just like to have more power in my life, more power of God in my life. Well, then put more Bible in your life. Increase your time in the Word of God, and the power will increase. That's one of the results. Those are the results of putting the Word of God in print. What are some reasons? What are some reasons that we want to be obedient to publish the Word of God in print? We said this earlier. Here, here's some things. Listen. Why do we want to, what are some reasons why we'd want to print and publish the Word of God? Well, number one, the Word of God endures. It can, hey, you can print it, it can sit inside a drawer, it may sit on a shelf, it, it can, it can uh, uh, just sit by idle forever long until somebody picks it up and needs it. How many times your testimonies from when the, uh, Somebody would talk about being in a motel room and being at their low point, and they open up a drawer, and what's in there? Gideon Bible. And they'll talk about reading that, and God speaking to their heart, and they get saved, or they get right with God. And, hey, that Bible just sat there all that time. How many people came in that room, out of that room, and never opened the drawer? But the Bible stayed there. The Bible was faithful, and it was ready to... And, then, by the way, when, when someone opened it, it was ready. And the Word of God didn't return void. Word of God endures. Uh, the Word of God never needs a furlough. Missionaries come home every so often, and maybe support comes down. Some missionaries got to go home and raise the support up again. Uh, family members, uh, the Mullins' mother gets sick, family gets sick. Somebody's got to come home and, and tend to the family. You know what? The Bible never needs a furlough. Stays on the job 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Never needs a break. The Word of God never needs a visa to get into the country. Or a visa, uh, never has to uh, cross, need a visa to cross the border. It never has to leave the country for a while to get a visa renewed and then come back into the country. The Bible just stays there, always doing the job. The Word of God never grows old, never grows weary, never grows tired, never loses its power. Find out as missionaries and, and Brother Mullins talked about his illness and sometimes how he gets tired and, and there's only so much he can do and he, and he can't do all that he used to do 30 years ago. But guess what? The Bible still can. It never wears out, never gets tired, never loses its power. And the, the last thing is the Word of God will continue to work even when we're not there. You go, but that... That, that's why when Paul left Ephesus, you remember reading in Acts chapter 20, I think it is, he said, Wherefore, brethren, I commend you under God and the word of His grace. Paul said, I'm not going to be there anymore, and I'm not commending you to each other. I'm just commending you to God and to His word. When you, when you leave, when we leave Mexico, and by the way, I thought about this when we were preparing this, you know, go down to Mexico and you, you pass out the John and Romans. And I know that there have been some of the pastors there that say sometimes as much as two years later somebody shows up at their church and they have one of those John and Romans that they got two years earlier with the church's name on it. And they come into the service. You know why? All that time, we've been gone for two years. But the Word of God was still there. It was still working. It was still doing its job. It never stops. The word that, that the Lord sends forth, it will accomplish what He desires. Don't, don't underestimate the power of that word. Don't, don't think, hey Christian, don't think that this is something to, listen, don't think that when you witness that you've got to think of some smart, you know, and, you know, this real witty thing to say that will just convict them of their sin. No, you know what you need? Just give them the Scripture. Give them the Word of God. I've had people say, I'm an atheist or I don't believe the Bible. And I say, you know what? Then would you just let me share with you from the Bible how a person can know when they die they'll go to heaven? I know you're not interested. 
But you know, someday someone may ask you, what does the Bible say about it? At least you'll be able to say, well, some guy told me about it one day. And you know, and they'll say, all right. And you know, there's been, there have been several occasions where I open up the Bible and start going through the plan of salvation, reading the scriptures, and all of a sudden the tears start coming down their face. What is that? The power of the word of God. That's what that is. It's just the power of God's word. And so give them the word of God. It's powerful. That's why we want them to have the word of God. That's another reason. Now, what, what about the responsibility? The results, the reason, the responsibility to be obedient to publish the scriptures by printing. The responsibility is because, number one, the word of God can't produce itself. It can't reproduce itself. No matter how long that Bible sits there, it'll only ever be one Bible. Cannot reproduce itself. Can't do it on its own. God has given that responsibility to us to reproduce His Word for others. B, the, Bi the Word of God cannot move itself. It needs a carrier, it needs a plane, a truck, needs a mail, needs a missionary, needs someone, something, somehow to get it to where the people are who can, need, who can use it. I don't know how many Bibles they took to Armenia. Do you know, Ann, how many they were passing them out? But I don't know that Ron ever gave a number. Did he tell you? You know, hundreds if not several thousand Bibles that they're giving away over there. Sometimes people getting it for the very first time. A Bible in their own language. I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't pretend to know what that's like because I got saved when I was six years of age. And I do remember the first, about my dad going down to the, to the bookstore and buying me a Bible and bringing it home. And I do remember, I remember as a six-year-old, you know what I did? Open it up and <sighs> could smell the ink on the pages. Remember that? And, and you know what? I, I just wanted to read. I remember looking, starting in Genesis, and I just started reading. I want to read that Bible. That was, that was special to me. And that's not even close to what someone who's maybe lived their life and now they're 30, 40, 50, 60 years of age and they've never had a Bible. And they get, finally get one for the very first time. How precious that is. But it can't get there on its own. Somebody's got to carry it. Somebody's got to send it. Somebody's got to get it there. That's our responsibility. How shall they hear without a preacher? Missionaries, see, missionaries need the word of God to get the job done. Say, so, well, we just, we just support church planters. That's all we support. Well, how are you going to plant a church without a Bible? What are you going to stand up and preach to them? You, you tell them, if you just tell them your words... Are you telling them this is what God says? You're telling them to trust you. And that'll be fine until someone else comes along and says, no, don't trust him, trust me. And he gives a whole different story. Now, our, our faith and our confidence is not in any man. Even, even the Apostle Paul commended the people in Berea who said they, they were more noble than the people in Thessalonica and that they searched the Scriptures daily as to whether these things were so. Paul said they, they were more noble because they didn't even take my word for it. Imagine that. You imagine checking the Apostle Paul out. Reading, reading up saying, Paul, I just want you to know, I, I read up on that sermon you preached last night, and uh, you were right on. Just want to let you know. And by the way, he commended them for that. And, and was glad that they were checking him out by the Bible. Because that's a, the, it, 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 the missionary needs the word of God to get the job done. I commend you to God and the word of his grace. What do you commend them to? What authority do you give them if you don't have God's word? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. You've got to have the Bible. You've got to have the word of God. If we effectively reach our world for Christ, it'll be with the printed Word of God. It's our job. We'll get an opportunity to, get, to put that together Tuesday when we go to Milford. Put together some scriptures that'll go out to the field. We'll be able to send it. We're going to put those together. How, how exciting will it be? I don't know what 
language or what nation or whatever people group it's going to. I don't know what they'll be working on on Tuesday. We'll get to put those together and get them packaged up and they'll, they'll get them ready to send out. How exciting will it be when you get to heaven and somebody walks up with one of those Bibles that you helped put together and say, I read in here how I could be saved. And boy, I tell you what, they're in heaven because you published the Word of God. And they got one. I don't know about you. That, that's going to be unbelievable. And I want to be a part of that. That's our responsibility. Let's take it seriously. And let's get the word of God to those who don't have it. Amen? All right. Let's stand together and we'll have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow before you now this evening. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. And Lord, we are so blessed and we're so honored here in America to have your words and most of us have several copies of your word in our home and there's so many in this world that have never had one copy in their language that they could read God I pray that we realize that there's some things we should have been doing for the last 30 or 40 years but we realize we have not done them and we ask you to forgive us for that. And yet, Lord, we realize that if we couldn't plant the tree 30 years ago, we're going to plant one now. We're going to get on the ball and we're going to do what we know we ought to do. Forgive us for pushing off our responsibility on the heathen, lost people, to publish your word. They've not protected it and they've not preserved it and they've not cared for it. They've not treated it as precious and valuable like you've called us to. So Lord, I pray that you'd help us as a church to understand the importance of publishing the printed Word of God. Help us to take our responsibility seriously. Help us to make it a priority that we get the Word of God to all nations for the obedience of the faith. We love you. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's made their way to church tonight. Lord, I pray that we would leave now this evening and you would keep the, the message, keep the burden on our heart and our responsibility, keep it before us. We'd realize we need to take the gospel to every creature. And Lord, make us mindful of the people who cross our path every day who need to hear about Christ. Lord, help us to be witnesses for thee this week. We love you. Pray you'll be with us now as we depart and make us mindful of your presence with us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, Isn't He Wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Let's hear you sing. Isn't He wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard. It's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? One more time. Isn't He wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have I've heard it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? God bless you. You're dismissed. S sign up for VBS downstairs if you would and BPS Milford as well.